Oh, I wanted to call it quarantine, but that sounds just such a harsh word. So we've got through uh, Thursday, or hopefully, um, if you're stressed, if you're tired, if you're exhausted with homeschooling, then this session will hopefully make you feel better. The idea of the Pilates is to just have 30 minutes of that mind-body connection. We're going to work on strength and stretch and flexibility and balance and we're just going to enjoy moving our bodies together. So it's lovely that you've joined me, thanks for coming, um, and uh, we will begin. So if you're new to Pilates, by the way, then you just can just do the moves, and if you need to modify them, please do at any time. If you feel um, any, I'm not expecting you to feel any pain, but if you do, that's a sign that you should stop. Um, but otherwise, if you feel like it's challenging, then just work through the challenge. Um, and enjoy, enjoy the movement. As I say, our body loves to move and I really hope you enjoyed the session. It's just half an hour moving our body and having a little bit of headspace. The beauty of Pilates is we're so busy thinking about the movement that we forget to worry about our to-do list, or at least I do. Um, okay, so the other thing to tell you is that if you have a foam block, um, then this can be really useful as it will help you with your Pilates practice. Um, if you don't, then you could use a cushion um, or you could roll up a towel. If you haven't got a foam block, that doesn't matter, you can do it without. So we are going to begin in our Pilates um, positioning. So in Pilates, we are quite strict about um, everything coming from the uh, neutral spine and also uh, very uh, kind of conscious about our breath. So we're going to be talking a lot about inhale, exhale. If you get confused, then just keep breathing pelvis forward and back and what that does is it starts to mobilize the spine so um, I always say in my Pilates classes that enjoy this movement it's not a movement we do very often um, until a lady at one point said I do this movement late what are you talking about and the mind only boggles as to what she meant I didn't ask for details and then you're going to stop in the center so that should be you in your nice neutral spine you can do a double check by getting your fingers putting your thumbs in your belly button and kind of putting your fingers towards your pubic bone and you shouldn't be able to see your bottom fingers, you can just see your thumb. If you can see your fingers then you need to sort of tilt back a little bit so you're in your nice neutral spine. In Pilates we always think about breath, so we're going to put our hands onto our rib area, we're going to take a lovely inhale through the nose, inhale, and a lovely exhale through the, the mouth and making sure that you can feel that resistance with your ribs onto your hands. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the breath. All right, now we're gonna, when we do the next one, we're gonna do it again, and this time we're gonna really try and connect to that center core. So just above your belly button, you really want to be engaged there. So when you inhale, you connect through that center core. So inhale through the center, exhale through the center. So it all connects from here. It takes a bit of coordination, but once you've got it, you've got it. All right, now we're just going to take our feet a little bit wider, and we're just going to be rocking in the wind. So we're just blowing in the wind. We're making sure that our feet are nice and flat on the floor. They're acting as a tripod. They're not coming, lifting up and down. We're just going to be blowing in the wind. And then if it feels good, you're going to move side to side and just rocking out those hips side to side. And then when it feels good, you're going to stop in the center. Now you're going to come forward and back forward and back. So again, as you're coming forward and back, you want to make sure that you're spreading out through the toes, you're not allowing yourself to lose your balance, just rocking forward and back, blowing in the wind. Shoulders are back and down, you're still in your lovely neutral spine. For two, for one, and you're going to stop in the centre. Now we're going to bring the feet a little bit closer together and we're just going to pick up the heels. So we're just picking up the heels, walking through these feet. It's really lovely for getting your feet to engage in this mind-body connection and they should be really fluid. If you feel anything clicking, um, that should be fine, but if you feel anything really tightening up, then I would advise stopping. It should, everything in Pilates should feel lovely and fluid. Now, when you're ready, you're gonna speed it up. So you're just gonna speed it up, walking through these feet, as though you were trying to get through a muddy puddle. So you've got four, three, two, one, and stop in the center. I'm gonna do a lovely side bend. So we're just gonna go down to the side, up to the center, to the left, down, and up. Now you should feel a lovely natural catch, a stopping point. So once you feel that stopping point, 
Make sure you don't work beyond that. There's no need to work beyond it. You're just working with the body. The body loves to move. And this should feel really good. If you've been sat down a bit today, doing some homeschooling, or maybe even a bit more than a bit of homeschooling, then this should feel amazing. One more time. And release. We're going to do a lovely back bend now. So your feet are a little bit wider. We're going to bring up the arm. We're just going to bring the arm behind the headline. So you're just going to tilt your back. back. So it's a little hyperextension of the back. So we're not going too deep into that hyperextension. And we reach. And we reach. So we're growing taller in that movement as you reach. Again, this should feel lovely and fluid. We've got another three. Reach and lower. Reach again, feeling fluid and release. All right, hands cross out in front. So we cross and we open and we bring the arms up to shoulder height. So we go up and back. So again, we've got a lovely bend in the knees. It should feel lovely and fluid. You should start to feel a little bit more relaxed little bit less stiff hopefully if you are then your practice of pilates will be much easier one more time we're going to bring in a wrist rotation so we hold the arms out do a wrist rotation and back down and again wrist rotation and back so again we're going to be working head to toe we're going to get a bit of warmth through the legs and um, before we go onto the floor working our deep core connection we're going to do one more of these and then you're going to keep your arms out to the side. So you're going to keep your arm in T position, you're going to twist over to the right. So you're going to go around to the right and to the centre, to the left and to the centre. So you're making sure your shoulders are back and down, you're going around with the head and the waist and you're still in that lovely neutral spine. And again, we're going to do two more. It should feel so good to move your body. One more time and release okay well done so we're going to grab the phone block if you've got one or a cushion this is just really useful for keeping you in a nice um solid pilates positioning everything in pilates comes from the center core so with the block what we do is we keep everything really um, neat and tidy so if you've got a block use one if you haven't don't worry just be mindful about not letting the hips spray out to the side so you've got your block and we're going to do a lovely roll down so i'll show you from the side it's a lovely articulation for the spine it's really good for your spine mobility so you're going to make sure you've got a nice bend in your knees you're going to inhale drop the chin you're going to imagine you've got a beach ball out in front of you you're then going to exhale around yourself over that imaginary beach ball you're going to inhale hold and then you're going to exhale all the way back up this time we're going to think about doing it from the center core so thinking about that core connection inhale drop the chin exhaling coming up and rounding over that imaginary beach ball inhale hold and again engage with that center core exhale all the way back up. Try and think about imagining making a C shape with your spine. Inhale, drop the chin. Exhale, coming up and rounding over that lovely beach ball. Inhale, hold. And exhaling all the way back up, making a lovely C shape with that spine. Let's do one more time. Inhale, drop the chin. Exhaling up and rounding over that imaginary beach ball. Inhale, hold. Now while you're inhale holding and think about where is your body, is your balance all in the centre? Are you leaning more towards the toes or the heels? Think about trying to make your body weight nice and central and exhaling all the way back up. Shoulders back and down, lovely. So that should have felt amazing, it should have felt really fluid and um, as though you could do that all day, they feel so good. Okay, we're going to go into a little bit of balance work now. So again, if you've got a block, you're going to keep it between your thighs. If you haven't, don't worry, you can do it with that. Again, this is just going to keep you nice and neat. So you're going to take a lovely inhale, and you're going to exhale, and you're going to lift up your heels. Inhale, low. Exhale, lift. Inhale, low. So we're just coming up on the heels, inhaling lower. And this is really going to be working our balance. This is going to be about creating balance in the centre line of the body. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. We lift 
and low. So again, you don't want to have your body weight shifting forward. If you do, you'll be sort of tripping over your shins and that will they will complain tomorrow. So ideally, you're going up and low. Lift and low. And again, let's do two more. Great for your balance. One more and release. All right, you can get rid of your block now. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, work on the oblique. So we're going to put our hands, our feet, and uh, hip distance apart. Our arms are going to come up over our head. We're going to take a lovely inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to move your arms to the right and then to the centre. To the left and to the centre. And again. So you're working the obliques. Now, if you have got a cushion or you have got a block, you can hold the block in between your hands. And again, this time I'm going to bring in a shoulder mobiliser. So you're going to go over to the right, bring your arm down, lift up to the centre, other side. Left, bring the arm down, lift to the centre. Two more like this, and down to the centre. One more time. And release. Okay, lovely. You're going to bring the feet closer together now. And we're going to do the same thing again, arms up high. And then you're just going to move over to the right and back to the centre. So this time, really think about travelling quite a big distance with your hip in the opposite direction. And you should start to feel obliques working in a different position. Now again, if, I should have said this actually, if you've got high blood pressure, then you don't really want to have your hands over your head. So you could just do it going to the side. So I think we've got right, one more time, left, and release, lovely. Okay, let's do a bit more on balancing before we go down onto the floor. So you're going to make sure you've got your knees nice and bent, you've got a lovely neutral spine, so your tailbone is slightly tucked up and under, you're nice and tall in the spine because we're not currently watching Netflix, or perhaps you are, and then you're going to take a lovely inhale, you're going to exhale, lift the leg, so lifting your right leg, and you're just going to hold it there. Now, what you should feel is you should feel a little bit like, oh, I'm off balance, that feels quite challenging. We see, I see my kids do this all the time, like in the garden, playing silly things, and they can hold it for ages. And it's actually a deep core connection. Your body has to work quite hard to keep it there. You can have your arms out to the side, if that feels good. If you need to, hold onto a wall or a chair. And then if you're ready, you're gonna take the leg down, up, down, up. So hopefully, you've got your body weight nice and central, and that you're not leaning too far over on one side or the other. So you're going to do another four and lower, three, lower, two, here's your last one and then you're going to hold your leg up high, you're going to hold it here, so four, three, two, one and release, lovely, give it a little shake out. Okay, back to the same leg again, again, arms are out nice and wide, just take a lovely inhale, lift the leg, hold it there. Then when you're ready, you're going to exhale, take the leg out and in, out and in. So you should start to feel some great activation in the thigh. So in Pilates, we're always working that deep core connection. We're always working that core and we're also working head to toe. So you should feel that thigh working, engaged along with the core. Who knew this could be so challenging? Two more. One more and release, give it a lovely shake out. Okay, over to the other side. So again, you're gonna make sure you've got a lovely bend in those knees. Inhale, exhale, release the arms. Inhale, lift the leg, oh, we're doing this one, aren't we? Lifting the leg up, and just gonna hold it there. Nearly forgot the routine there. Caffeine has run out, I think. And you're gonna make sure that you're not wibble wobbling. If you are, then you need to hold on to a wall or a chair if you've got a child nearby, hang on to them. And then when you're ready, you're going to take the leg down, up, down, up. So we're just taking that leg down and up. Now, if this is too much, you just keep your leg out. You don't drop it down and up. If you're finding your arms are tired, that's good. They are being engaged too. That deep core connection is working. So up and lower. Last four. Making sure you're engaging with that body weight. Are you nice and central? One more for luck, and then you're going to hold your leg here. You're going to hold it for four, three, two, 
one and release, give it a little shake out. I can totally feel that. I, do, I always don't, I don't know why, but it absolutely does engage everything. So I hope you feel it too. All right, I'm going to take the arms out to the side. Take a lovely inhale. Exhale, so lift your leg into your bent knee position. If you find that that's more than enough for you, then you stay in that position. Otherwise, you join in with me. You take it out, in, out, in. Now again, do a little body check. Where is your body weight? You should be nice and central. So you're nice and tall, shoulders back and down. We've got four, three, two. Again, it's not a fling, I forgot to mention, don't fling the knee, it's soft knees. One more time, and hold, and release. Give it a little shake out. Okay, we're gonna go down onto the mat now. I'm gonna do some stuff, uh, some stuff, some exercises for your core. So we're gonna go straight into our four point position. You're going to make sure that you're in your four-point position. So to be able to do that, you want to make sure that your knees are in alignment with the hips and that your wrist is in alignment with your shoulders. So you don't want to be out here and you don't want to be in here, otherwise you're going to find that's really uncomfortable for the back. So your back is nice and flat and if you had a cup of tea on your back right now, it wouldn't be sliding off, or at least that's the theory. So you're going to engage that core. So really think about connecting, zipping up your core so that as though you were wearing a really tight pair of trousers. Whenever I say that, people look at me as though they don't really know what that means. So perhaps it's just me who wears overly tight trousers. But nonetheless, really zip up that core as though you did have some really tight trousers on. You're going to take a lovely inhale and then you're going to exhale. You're going to say one arm up and reach it out and the other and then it comes down. One arm reach and then it comes back down. So you're not doing very much movement at the moment but your core is having to work hard to just lift your arm. It's also a bit of mind gym as well. Your brain's thinking about the move so we exhale and love. We're going to do two more last time and stop where you are. We're then going to engage the left. So again, connecting with that core, lovely inhale, and then you're going to exhale, lift the leg back, inhale, low. Exhale, lift, and low. Another trick here is that you're not wobbling around. You're literally taking the leg up and lower. So it's as though you've been super glued into the position. So we lift, and low. We've got two more of these. One more. And release. All right, now we're gonna, if you're feeling good about that and you wanna make it a little bit harder, then follow me. If you feel like, actually, Charlotte, this is enough today, I'm just gonna carry on enjoying the arm movement or the leg movements, then that's absolutely fine. Stay in that position. But if you want to join in with me, then this is what we're gonna do. It's called the bird dog. You're gonna take a lovely inhale. You're going to exhale and you're going to take one arm and the opposite leg up and you're going to inhale, hold. Again, thinking about that nice flat back and exhale, low. And again, inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. So you're really growing longer with that arm and the leg. Inhale, hold. Exhale, low. And again, inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. So you're really growing long. Nice and strong in that position, and low. You should start to feel a lovely quiver in that core. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold, and exhale, lower. Let's do two more, inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold, and exhale, lower. One more time, inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. Should start to feel a lovely quiver in that core. Exhale, lower. Sit back onto your heels, stretch it out. For a lovely child's pose. Lovely, lovely, everyone. Well done. Okay, now, if you can stay in that position or you can join in with me and make it a little bit harder. So just a little bit harder, just for a few more. So to make it harder, you're going to stay in your four-point position and you're going to do exactly the same move again, but this time I'm going to sort of add in a little karate chop, and that's really going to engage the, um, the side of your um, 
the side of your waist, your obliques, and also it's going to be working your glutes quite quite well as well, and a bit of shoulder mobility. So it's one one size fits all. So you're going to do a lovely inhale. You're going to exhale, lift up and long, and then you're going to exhale, do a karate chop. So your arm comes out to the side as just your leg, and then you're going to inhale back and exhale lower, changing over. Inhale, exhale lift, exhale take the arm and the leg out to the side. It looks silly, but it actually works you really, really hard. And back to the centre and lower down. Let's just do two more. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Exhale, take the arm and the leg out to the opposite side. A little karate chop. And come back to the centre. Inhale, hold. Exhale, lower. Just one more time. Rest if you need to. You don't have to do them all. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Exhale, take your arm and leg out to the side and bring it back to the center exhale lower sit back into your heels for a lovely shell stretch or child's pose okay so we are going to do another move so the next move is called the bear plank one of my favorites it's an oldie but a goodie so in the bear plank again you're still in your four point position this time you're going to tuck your toes under make sure that you are keeping your back nice and flat and your bottom nice and low so you don't want your bottom to come up too high and you don't want your head to drop between your hands otherwise your back is going to complain tomorrow so again think about that kind of analogy of zipping up your really tight trousers so you're not letting your core hang down um, and kind of gravity wants it to push down towards the mat we're sucking that core up in towards the back so you know your four point position if you need to wiggle around to get the right position by all means do you take a lovely inhale and then you're going to exhale lift your knees off the mat you're going to inhale hold and you're just going to hold it there and you're going to exhale lower and again inhale exhale lift inhale hold and lower and again inhale exhale lift inhale hold now you should start to feel a little quiver in that core these are quite deceptive couple your legs these don't do much four five six you can really feel it and lower so let's do a few more inhale exhale lift inhale hold exhale lower and again inhale Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. I can feel it. Exhale, lower. Let's do three more, just three. We can do anything for three. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. You're holding that core. Should start to feel a little quiver in that core. Should be working. And lower. If you need to rest, rest. Two more. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold and lower one more time inhale exhale lift inhale hold and lower sit back onto your heels stretch it out lovely lovely everyone well done okay we're going to come on to the side now so we're going to do a lovely one-legged kick so you're going to be on your knees you're going to drop your ears to the right and drop your hand down and you should be making a nice sort of your your kind of wrist is in alignment with your knee and you're nice and solid so if I came over to push you then you wouldn't really move very much at all you're going to we're going to kind of put our hand behind our ear and we're going to rotate our hips open so what this what our hips normally want to do in this position is roll forward towards the mat but we want to roll them out so we don't let them roll forward, okay? And that will protect your back. So you're gonna point your toe, and then you're gonna take a lovely inhale again. And you're gonna exhale, lift, and lower. So we lift, and lower. Now you might find that this is a really big challenge, because it is a challenge. I can feel it working already. You should start to feel it along your thigh, side of your waist, now, if you're finding that this is too difficult, then you can take it low to the floor. I'll just show you. You could be head in hand, and you can take it up and lower, up and lower. But ideally, you're doing the tougher one. Lift and lower. We're just gonna do two more. One more and release. Lovely, so coming back to your knees, 
You're going to drop your ear over to the left, pop your hand down on the mat, and then you're going to point to your toe. Remember, we don't want those hips to roll forward. They do want to do that because it's easier. Your body compensates. Opening up that hip area. When you're ready, inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. So be really intentional with this move. Anyone can fling the leg into the position. We're doing it with control. We're doing it with precision. We're doing it with mind-body connection. Where are you in this movement? How are you feeling? Don't hold your breath. Exhale, lift. Lower. Four more. Three. Two. One more. And release. Lovely. If you can, you're going to maneuver into the child's pose. And lovely. Sit back on the heels. Stretch out those arms. And release. Alright, so you probably feel pretty warm by now. I do. Um, so we're going to go on to the mat. And we're going to do some lovely shoulder bridges. So, if you do have a block or a cushion, then it's a great idea to use it. But if you don't, then don't worry. You just need to be mindful that you're not... Um, letting your hips roll out to the side. So you're going to come down onto your back. You're going to make sure that you've got a nice neutral spine. So what we want in Pilates is that your back is kind of, um, your back is sort of floating on top of the mat. You haven't arched it and you're not sort of sticking your back, gluing it into the mat, otherwise it's going to complain tomorrow. So a good way of finding a neutral spine is if you imagine you've got a marble in your belly button, you rock the marble 12 o'clock towards your head, six o'clock towards your toes and you just keep rocking forward and back and then if you imagine your marble is stopping in the center of your imaginary clock that should be you in nice neutral spine now you also want to make sure we'll start with your heels quite close to the bottom if you have them far away you're going to get a cramp in your hamstring so making sure that your heels are quite close to the bottom start with your heels together and then take the heels wide inverted V and then knees in alignment with the toes. You kind of want to make it seem like you've got a tennis ball in between your knees or your phone block if you've got one. So this should be you in a nice neutral spine. It should feel really nice. And then for want of a better word, it should feel nice. And then all you're going to do, she says, as we're walking in the park, is you're going to take a lovely inhale and you're going to exhale. And as you exhale, you're going to bring your bottom off the mat towards the ceiling. Now when you feel that natural catch, that stopping point, that's where you want to stop. You could go higher and like push your hips out, but that's not good practice. So you're just literally gonna lift till you get that catch, and then you're gonna exhale, lower all the way back down. So it's a lovely articulation for the spine. It rolls into position and rolls back down. So it should feel really lovely. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. So if you don't have the block, don't worry. It, ju it just means that you need to be conscious of like an imaginary tennis ball between your knees so that you don't let those hips spray out to the sides because if they do, it can challenge your lower back. And then you're going to exhale, roll all the way down. And you're going to do it again. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. Now just do a little body check for me. Are your hips nice and square to the ceiling? If you've got one dropping lower than the other, then you need to squeeze your glute to make sure it's in nice alignment with the ceiling. Otherwise, again, your hips will complain tomorrow. Exhale, lower. Let's just do one more as they feel so good. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. If you can't get the breath, don't worry, just keep breathing and exhaling all the way back down. So if you're feeling good about that and you want to make it a little bit harder, then join in with me. Otherwise, you can just stay and do the one that we just did. So to make it a little bit harder, we're going to inhale. And then as we exhale, we're going to bring our heels off the mat as though we were wearing really high wedges, which I do love to do. So my feet are very used to that position. So in a nice sort of high heel position, you're then going to do exactly the same move again. You're going to inhale. And you're going to exhale, lift your bottom. So because we've got the heels now off the mat, it's making your core work much harder to keep you in balance, okay? So it should feel more challenging. If it doesn't, it is more challenging. So it's just, it's a deep core connection. It's hard to, to tell. And then you're going to lower back 
down. Don't let the heels drop unless it feels uncomfortable, then of course do. Inhale here, exhale lift. Inhale, hold. And exhale, low. As you're doing this move, don't let the chin roll back. You kind of want your chin sort of tracking into your chest, otherwise your neck's going to hurt tomorrow. Inhale here. Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. And exhale, lower. Let's just do one more time. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Hold here. And exhale, lower. All right, and exhale, bring your heels down. Or if you've got a block or a cushion, you can get rid of that now. I'm gonna make this move a little bit more challenging. So if this is more than enough for you, then you just stay doing the shoulder bridge that I just showed you, either with your heels flat on the floor or your heels up. But if you want to make it more challenging, we're going to bring in a leg wave. I call it a leg wave. I'm not sure what the technical term is, but it works for me. So again, you're gonna do exactly the same, making sure you've got that nice neutral spine. Don't arch your spine, it will complain tomorrow. So making sure your, mat, your back is floating on top of the mat. Take a lovely inhale to prepare. Exhale, bring the bottom up. Inhale, hold when you feel that natural catch. So the hips are not flexing towards the ceiling. Inhale, lift one leg, don't mind which one. Flex the foot, you're gonna exhale, lower. Inhale, point. So we flex and we point. Flex and point. So we exhale. Inhale. So you don't want your leg to come too far towards the floor. It's kind of to knee height, a little bit lower than knee height, but not too much. And you also want to make sure that your back is not rolling and your hips aren't rolling out to the side. Hopefully with the block, we've created a bit of muscle memory. So we flex and point. Let's do four more. Three. Good should feel amazing, especially after a tough day. And inhale, hold. Now, you can lower the leg or you can join in with me. And we're gonna do eight pulses. So we're just pushing the leg, doing little shoulder bridge squeezes for four, three, two, one. Inhale, hold, exhale, lower the legs. Exhale, lower the bottom. And hug the knees into the chest. And if it feels good, you're just gonna rock side to side. So that should have felt amazing. And with the legs, it should be really fluid. Again, if it's not fluid, then perhaps take it down a level and um, you know, try it again next time. Sometimes your body doesn't work as well as you'd like. I'm sure you all have that feeling. And sometimes your body can work much harder than it did previously and then not so much the next time. So just work, make this workout work for you. All right, we're gonna do the other side now. So we're gonna take a lovely inhale. We're gonna exhale, lifting up into our shoulder bridge. My heel's a little bit too far away. So if you'd like me, you need to whip all around. Uh, absolutely fine. So you're gonna take the inhale, take the leg up, flexing the foot, and we're gonna do it again. So we inhale, flex, exhale, inhale, point. So if like me, you hear a little creak, my, it's for some reason this ankle always creaks. Um, that's absolutely fine. But again, it should be fluid. So we exhale, inhale. Don't hold your breath. Don't let those hips roll out to the side as you get tired. That's ultimately what happens. So we flex, flex. You've only got 302 to go. Not really, it's a silly joke. We've only got another three. So it should feel nice and controlled. Not flinging, it's control from that centre core. Inhale, hold the leg. And if you want to join in with me, we're gonna do eight pulses. If you don't want to do the pulses, that's fine. We've got four, three, two, one. Inhale, hold, exhale, lower. Drop the bottom down, have one knee, then the other. And you're gonna rock side to side. All right, we're just gonna do one more exercise. And then we're going to do a lovely stretch. So we are going to do, um, we're going to do a lovely spine twist. So we're going to take, um, we're going to do a lovely, what we're going to do actually is we're going to have our feet flat on the floor. We'll do two versions. So you're going to have your arms out in T position. And then you're going to take an inhale, of course, to prepare. And then you're going to exhale, take the legs over to one side. And then you're going to bring them back to the centre. You're going to take the knees over to the other side. 
and come back to center. So the trick here is that you don't want your shoulders to come off the mat and you don't want to disengage with those legs. So the core has to work really hard to bring the knees back to the center. And again, exhaling. So your breath is your powerhouse. So really think about engaging that breath over to the side, to the center. One more time. And hold it there. So if that felt more than enough to you, then just stick with that move. Otherwise you can make it a little bit harder. So to do that, we're gonna inhale and exhale, lift our legs up into table top. So we're gonna make sure that our knees are in alignment with the hips and so that we're not having our legs over here or we're not bringing our legs too close to our chest. So tabletop meaning that you've got your knees in alignment with your hips. And again, imagine you've got a tennis ball in the middle of your knees. You're gonna do the same thing again. So inhale to prepare and you're gonna exhale, take the legs over to the side and then you're gonna come back to the center and over to the other side. So as we're doing this, we don't want the shoulders to come off the mat. So as soon as you feel your shoulders lifting, that means you've taken your legs over too far and you, you're gonna compromise your back stability. So you want to make sure that you're not doing that. You also, if you are feeling like, Charlotte, this isn't doing enough, then you can extend your legs out and you can roll over to the side and back to the center. So this should feel really challenging because it definitely feels challenging to me. And again, over to the side and to the center and again over to the side and to the center one more time and to the center and hug the knees into the chest and rock side to side all right we're going to bring it down now i'm going to do a lovely exercise called the one legged one knee fall out so this is really good if you have any low back problems, if you sat down for too long and your back's feeling really stiff, then this is a great exercise to do because it really massages the lower back. So you start again in your neutral spine, making sure your back is just floating on top of the mat. Your knees are together this time, so no tennis ball in, in the middle. And you're just gonna, again, engage your breath, inhale. And then as you exhale, you're gonna take one knee out to the side and then bring it back to the center. Drop the knee out to the side and bring it back to the center. It's also really good if you're a runner because it's also engaging your hip flexors in the front of your thigh. So it's really good for that. Now, if you're thinking, Charlotte, I don't really feel much activation, that's, that's fine, but you can make it harder by inhaling, exhaling, coming up into your tabletop position and you do exactly the same move again. You exhale, open, inhale, close. So when you're doing this movement, it's almost like you're opening a book. So it's like you're opening the page of a book and you should feel that deep core connection and you should feel that your hip flexors are engaged as well and they're getting a lovely stretch out. So we're just going to do one more each side. And again. And then you're going to bring your knees into your chest and rock side to side. All right, you're going to take your leg like a long onto the mat. And then what you're going to do is you're going to flex your feet and then point your toes away. So you're going to flex and point, flex and point. So if you can, if you haven't got any kids or husbands or pets bothering you, then if you can close your eyes and just think about your body stretching, flexing your feet, pointing your feet and just enjoying that movement. Again, thinking about the back floating on top of the mat. And then you can just stop there. Now, if you can, you're just going to let your legs roll out to the side. You're going to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Let the weight of your head fall into the mat. Let the weight of your bottom fall into the mat. And just catch your breath. So 
So hopefully you're feeling like you've done some work, you feel a bit more stretched and a bit more flexible. And let's keep working with the breath. So I like to take deep inhales, inhaling good health and exhaling stress. So you can put your hands on your rib area or just stay where you are on the mat. Taking a lovely deep inhale, inhaling good health. And exhaling all that stress. And again, inhaling good health. And exhaling all that stress. One more time because it's been one of those days. Inhaling good health. And exhaling all that stress. And just holding it there. Letting the weight of your head fall into the mat. All right, when you're ready, you're gonna bring one knee in towards the chest and you're just gonna hold it where it feels good for a hip flexor stretch. Try not to really squeeze it in towards your chest, just hold it where it feels good. Try not to engage your hips or your bottom. Hopefully you're feeling like you're coming back down and you're relaxing into your evening now, which is my intention to make that transition from hectic day to calm, enjoyable evening. The, light, the nights are getting lighter, which is good news putting a spring in my step. And then if it feels good, you're gonna bring that knee across the center line of your body. And you're gonna, if you've got any back issues, you're gonna stay looking in the same direction as your knee. Otherwise, you're gonna take your head and your arms in the opposite direction for a lovely spine twist. And you're just gonna hold it there. And just embrace this movement, a lovely twist in the spine. And then when you're ready, you're going to come back to centre, take the leg along. And then you're going to inhale again, deep inhale. You're going to bring that knee in towards the chest. Again, you're just holding it where it feels good. Um, try not to be too intentional with that movement, just relaxing into it. Should feel a lovely stretch in the lower back, across your bottom and your hip flexor. If it feels good, you're going to take that leg across the centre line of your body. And let's say the knee's going to go towards the, front of the mat. You're going to bring your arms and your head in the opposite direction so that you can feel a lovely spine twist. And it should feel really nice. So you could stay there for quite a long time. And it's relaxing those muscles and bringing you back to a sense of normality, whatever that is. And then when you're ready, you're going to come back to the centre. And you're going to bring both feet flat on the mat. You're going to have your knees together and drop your knees out to the side. So you've got the palms of your feet together. And you're just going to let your legs, your knees roll out to the side. If you can, don't engage your hips or your bottom. Just let go of those muscles, feeling the weight of your head fall into the mat and your bottom. And if you can, you're going to close your eyes. And you're just going to enjoy that stretch and check in with your body. If you've got one side feeling more tense and more um, tight than the other side. So for me, it's always my left side always feels a bit tighter than the right. So that's something to be aware of. Again, taking lovely inhales, deep inhale, inhaling good health. Exhaling stress. One more time, inhaling good health. Exhaling stress. All right, when you're ready, you're gonna bring those knees back to the center. You're gonna drop your knees to face me over to the side. And then very slowly, you're gonna come up into sitting. Could have stayed there much longer. And then when you're ready, you're gonna come up to standing and you're gonna take a lovely plie. Hopefully your hair's looking better than mine. You're gonna take a lovely inhale. Drop the knees, exhale, release up to the ceiling. Deep breath. 
Exhale, reach one more time. And reach. And you did it. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. Stay really healthy. See you Saturday for kettlebells. See you then, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining me.